so we can do it very, very openly. Uh, Professor Taras Kurelets, uh, he came from Ukraine. He was studying here in, in, uh, in Thomas Aquinas University, Pontifical University. Uh, also, he is working today at the Institute of Ecumenical Studies as research fellow and he also represents the main organizer of this conference that we came here, and thanks to him also. So, Professor Taras, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, dear Father Yur, for uh, such a warm uh, presentation. I'm not professor yet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Maybe it will be a sort of prophetic voice for, the <laughs> for my future. Okay, uh, I wanted to stress today the idea of uh, double or simultaneous communion, uh, which was already mentioned uh, in, in a few papers, but I, I would like to mention uh, not only Melkite Initiative, so-called, but also the uh, initiative which was born in the in Ukrainian uh, in diaspora in the United States between uh, U Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church and the Constantinople Patriarchate. In more than one paper during this conference, the Melkite Initiative was mentioned. That is the idea of uh, restoring communion between the Antiochian Orthodox Church and its sister, the Melkite Greek Catholic Church. I would like, uh, I would like uh, also to mention, but in, uh, in comparison with another initiative, the activity of the Kievan Church Study Group as an informal dialogue between the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church and the Ecumenical Patriarchate which studied the possibil possibilities of restoring communion between the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church and the Ecumenical Patriarchate without breaking communion with the Roman Apostolic See. I find these initiatives very interesting and brave, despite the fact that they didn't succeed in achieving their goal. However, a negative result is also a result that shows that the chosen path cannot be implemented under the given circumstances. Despite the fact that both initiatives did not achieve the desired result, it cannot be said that the experience was entirely negative. The process, it, uh, the, the process itself was accompanied by the vivid academic activity, a brotherly exchange of ideas, sincere conversations, and the in, in, uh, initiation of personal friendships. The rapprochement between the Melkites and Antiochians began immediately after the Second Vatican Council, while uh, the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church and the Ecumenical Patriarchate rapprochement began uh, only in the end of uh, 18th and then in the diaspora on, on the American continent. It is necessary to note immediately the fundamental difference between those two initiatives. While a study, a given church study group considered this possibility on a theoretical academic level, being by its nature an informal dialogue, the work of individual theologians who nevertheless had the blessing of their churches. While the Melkites initiative was in, uh, to the Melkites initiative was involved hierarchy and synods of both churches. But it has more, uh, more um, official dimension. <coughs> Excuse me. Now to the Melkite initiative. As I said, the rapprochement uh, process began at the 17th um, of the last century, and the concrete idea of double communion, or as we called it, simultaneous communion, was highlighted in 1975 thanks to the initiative of the Archbishop of Baalbek, Elias Zogby, who wrote, both churches have preserved the basis of the dogmas and the structure of the church. Although the expression of these dogmas is different and the organization of the churches is also different. Apart from the different differences in theology, the faith remains identical. It is precisely the identity of faith that uh, the unity and fellowship can be restored. I want to stress uh, once more that he thought about the identity of faith because this um, term will be used uh, in the uh, response from the part of Roman Apostolic See on this initiative. In 1981, the famous book of Archbishop uh, Elias Zogbeck appeared, Tus, uh, Tus Schismatic or uh, Aral Schismatics. He completely refuses to live in the schism that exists between the Orthodox and the Catholic Churches, having written the corresponding act of faith. In July 1995, 
at the end of the Synod of the Melkite Greek Catholic Church, the majority of bishops accepted this act of, of faith, which Archbishop Ellis uh, edited in a concrete uh, form. First, I believe in everything that Eastern Orthodoxy teaches. I am in communion with the Bishop of Rome within the limits defined by the Holy Eastern Fathers for, for the first among the, uh, among the bishops in the first millennium before the division. The Synod of the Antiochian Church, uh, Antiochian Orthodox Church, responded uh, to this in 1995, saying, I'm quote, It is the time for the, Antiochian, uh, the, for the Antiochians would to heal the land uh, where they, would to heal the land but it appeared. Thus we come to July 1996 when the Archbishop uh, pro uh, project of Elias Zogby becomes an all-church matter and is accepted by the Synod of Bishops on behalf of the entire Melkite Greek Catholic Church. Patriarch Bartholomew and Pope John Paul II were also informed about this initiative. According to the Melkite theologians, three th things are necessary to, uh, to the appropriate solution of such uh, direction. Preparation, participation, and reception of the faithful uh, of the two church churches. And this can begin with the following stages. Allowing the laity to partake uh, to, to the Eucharist in both churches. Second, blessing the priests of common religious services and sacraments, including the Eucharist. In the last measure, the union of patriarchy, one patriarchy and one hierarchy. hierarchy. Now about a few words about the Kievan Church Study Group. The Kievan Church Study Group was an initiative that arose on the American continent between individual representatives of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church and the Constantinople Patriarchate, la laymen and clergy of the Orthodox and Catholic Churches of Ukraine. It was launched in uh, 1992. This dialogue, unlike the Melkite Initiative, never had an official status. But the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church officially emphasized, emphasized the significant contribution uh, and uh, achievements of this group to the understanding of ecumenism. The purpose of its creation is to investigate the question, could the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church restore contacts with the Constantinople Patriarchate without severing the ties with Rome and remaining under its uh, jurisdiction. While the Joint Commission was slow to, while the Joint Commission, uh, I mean Joint Theological Commission between the uh, Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox Churches, was quite slow to consider the theological differences between Orthodox and Catholics, the members of Kievan Church Study Group immediately began uh, discuss complex and controversial issues. This became po possible thanks to the informal nature of the meetings, which made it possible to create an atmosphere of sincere exchange of ideas. The group did not manage to reach an understanding uh, on the main problem. The Orthodox never agreed that the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, uh, Church, recognizing the teaching of the First Vatican Council, could start com uh, communion with them. Um, of this, uh, I returning again to the Melkite Initiative. Um, the Pope John Paul II and the congregations uh, were informed about this in, in, initiative, and there was official answer from the part of congregation of doctrinal faith and response of this Melkite Initiative or Zogby Initiative, as these ideas were baptized in the theological uh, ch ch churches. The circles was, as should be expected, restrainingly negative. The response letter signed by, Car signed by Cardinal jo Josef Ratzinger, Cardinal Walter Kasper, and Edward Cassidy diplomatically applaud the concert over the division and effort to overcome it, but cautions that immediate, immature, one-sided ideas should be avoided, where the possible results may not be sufficiently learned it may have serious consequences for the other Eastern Catholics, especially those living in the same region. As for the essence for the, uh, <coughs> this response uh, follows. When raising this question, it is necessary to take into account that the context of the dialogue could be used not only by these two direct participants. The patriarchates of the Catholic uh, Greek Melkite Church and the Antioch Orthodox Church, but also by the denominations which uh, 
with which the, those two particular heads are in full communion, namely the Catholic community in current and uh, the Orthodox in future. That is necessary to think more globally. The reason for the negative response from the official uh, church bodies uh, was difference in faith. And the core of this difference in faith is the primacy of the Roman bishop. Having declared their full identity, I'm quoting the answer of, from the part of uh, um, Congregation for the Eastern Churches. Having declared their full identity to the teaching of orthodoxy, Greek Catholic uh, Melchites must take into account the fact that the Orthodox churches today are not in full communion with the Church of Rome, and therefore this identity is impossible, fidelity is impossible, since there is no complete correspondence between creed and the practice of two sides. As for the communication with the Bishop of Rome, we know that the doctrine of the primacy of the uh, Roman, uh, Roman pontiff has undergone development over the time, within the frameworks uh, of the explanations of the church faith, it must be preserved in its entirety, meaning from its ori origin to the present. Thus we see uh, the response of 1995 from both sides, from Rome and from, from the Orthodox Patriarchate of Antioch to the now project uh, of dual affiliation is essentially the same. The unity of a part of the Catholic Church with one of the Orthodox churches is impossible, without unity between Rome and Orthodox churches, as well as unity in the sacraments is impossible without unity in faith. The Commission also considered that the issue of the primacy of the Roman bishop is a matter of revealed faith, and it concerns the foundation of the church, and since it is not the same between Orthodox and Catholics, it is not possible to start a double communion or a simultaneous communion even despite the fact that there is already incomplete communion between the Orthodox and the Catholics. As to the modalities for exercising the patrician ministry in our time, a question which is distinct from the doctrinal aspects is it true that the Holy Father has recently desired to, uh, to remind us uh, how we may seek together, of course, the form, the, which, the form in which this ministry may accomplish a service of law recognized uh, by all concerned. However, if it is legitimate to also deal with the, this one of local level, it is also duty to the, this always is harmony with the vision of the universal church. Touching this matter, it is appropriate to be reminded that in any case, the Catholic Church, both in the practice, uh, praxis and in the solemn day documents, hold that the communion of the particular churches with the Church of Rome and of their bishops with the Bishop of Rome is in God's plan an essential requisite of full and visible communion. In summary, the fraternal dialogue undertaken by the Greek uh, Melkite Catholic Patriarchate will be better uh, able to, be, to serve the ecumenical dialogue to the degree uh, that it strives to involve the entire Catholic Church to which it belongs in the maturing of new sensitivities. There is good reason to believe that the Orthodox in general uh, share the same worry but also to the obligation of communion within their own body. As we see in the answer of uh, Congregation for the Eastern Churches to these Melkite initiatives, the um, main approach was, the, not, not reproach, but the main problem was the uh, absence of the unity of faith and the core of this uh, this unity in face is the service of the Roman pontiff. Meanwhile, in their declaration, Melchizedek wanted, uh, were trying to overcome this problem. The formula uh, that they presented was not well accepted. Melchizedek tries to answer this question by proposing the formula of uh, papal primacy within the first millennium. And the issue of the primacy of the Bishop of Rome can be resolved by two steps. First. Recognition of all councils unilaterally, uh, unilaterally convened by the Roman See as not ecumenical but all church councils of the Roman Catholic Church. Second, the power of the Pope in relation to the Eastern Patriarchs must be that which was determined by the Council of Florence, where it is stipulated that all the privileges of the Eastern Patriarchs are preserved intact. 
regarding the primacy of the Bishop of Rome, Archbishop uh, Elias expressed the opinion of the Greek Catholic Church. I'm quoting, everyone accepts the primacy of the Bishop of Rome, the primacy of the Bishop of Rome. But the primacy of God's right, which gives the Pope universal jurisdiction and, pers and personal infallibility, the Holy Father of the East never assumed it, never mentioned it, neither personally nor at the councils, and never experienced it during the first millennium of Christian unity. The answer from the side of Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith was, the doctrine of primacy must be pro uh, respected or preserved throughout its de development in the Catholic Church. Quoting, on the question of communion with the Bishop of Rome, we know that the doctrine, uh, doctrine concerning the primacy of the uh, Roman Pontiff has experienced a de development over the time within the frameworks of the explanation of the Church's face and has to be retained in its entirety, which means from its origin to our day. One only has, has to think about the, what the First Vatican Council affirmed and what Vatican Council II declared. Particularly in the Dogmatic Constitution Lumen Gentium number 22 and 23, and in the Decree on Ecumenism Unitatis et Integratio number 2. Although the work now are I, uh, um, I return back to the Cuban Chair Study Group. Okay. Although the work of the studio uh, Cuban Chair Study Group was stopped in 1996, Lubomir at that time head of the current Great Catholic Church addressed the idea of simultaneous communion uh, at the, in his uh, letters. In a letter to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, uh, head Metropolitan Volodymyr, he proposed an uh, algorithm for achieving communion between East and West through unity in the service of the Eucharist and with the common patriarch. I'm quoting, in order to restore the lost unity, the author of the letter uh, offered the all above mentioned churches, first of all, to, to mutually recognize each other as hypostatically and uniquely in their own leadership and priesthood, each equal to the service uh, of the sacrament of the salvation. After that, all churches must recognize a common confession of faith based on the Nicene Constantinople Creed. As a result, it is uh, proposed to recognize mutually the validity and grace of the sacraments, the legitimacy of hierarchical structure. After that, it is necessary to enter the names of the heads of, the uh, of each church into diptych and mutually commemorate them during the liturgy. It, it is important to note that this, despite all of this, each of the mentioned churches remain in communication with their uh, uh, hierarchical church, meaning uh, Constantinople and Rome. Here I've got to skip a little bit, but uh, I've got to mention that there was answer for, from the part of uh, Ukrainian uh, Orthodox Church at that time of Moscow Patriarchate, um, where they um, criticized much this uh, uh, approach, this idea of Cardinal Husar, saying that this was uh, uh, that he proposes a new unia in one uh, matter and. Uh, uh, and they uh, recalled the old practice, uh, old idea, saying that um, for Eastern Catholics, those who are keen to their uh, Eastern Rite, they can be aggregated into the uh, Orthodox churches, and uh, those who, for whom the unity with Rome is essential, can be aggregated to the Roman Catholic Church, disappearing in such a way. Um, and going to the current state of affairs, um, in the context of receiving Thomas by the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, many voices were heard from the ordinary faithful. Why shouldn't the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church and the newly created Orthodox Church uh, unite? Because they, are, they have so much in common. However, both heads of the churches, His Beatitude Svetoslav and His Beatitude Epiphanius, no longer refer to the idea of double or simultaneous communion, but agree that the keys to such unity are found in Constantinople and in Rome, where the Orthodox Catholic dialogue is conducted. The experience of aforementioned uh, search for simultaneous communion has shown uh, us that the Eastern Catholics want their greater subjectivity within the frameworks of the Catholic communion to which they belong. The basis for this is the sense of closeness, uh, closeness with the Orthodox brothers. In addition, in, central, uh, in certain historical period, periods, such pre uh, precedents have already uh, taken place. There are, in general, two models of restoration of communion. The first, 
first we, we need to achieve complete unity in faith and only then we can celebrate the liturgy together. And the second says that since the Catholics recognize the full ecclesiality of the Orthodox churches, we can now celebrate the liturgy together and the common communion will help us to overcome those differences that still exist. Currently, at the official level, both Orthodox and Catholics adhere to the first model, where the common Eucharist is considered, Eucharist is considered as a coronation on the higher point uh, of uh, achieving the unity in faith. Under such circumstances, the idea of double communion cannot be realized, uh, realized at the moment. As a conclusion, the initiative to restore communion at the local level um, in the absence of communion between their confessional families was interesting and brave, but after the division between the churches, each of them went through a certain way of de developing of their doctrines, and the difference between Orthodox and Catholicism are so significant that it is impossible to talk now about the restoration of communion at the local level. I repeat in this moment, lo loyalty to their confessional families Orthodox and Catholicism requires them to expect the resolution of all differences in faith at the global ecumenical level in the course of uh, the bilateral theological dialogue. And even better, they should join this process and become a part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Taras, for your uh, speech. And you showed us two very great initiatives in the past, the Melchite Initiative and also Kievan Church Study Group. Uh, as I understood, it was very positive experience of the dialogue from 1990s between Constantinople Patriarchate and the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. Uh, uh, may, I, I, may I have a, I would like to say something. Yes, of course, you will have time, uh, Professor Ivan. Uh, if you have questions, you can ask. No, I, have, I just want to explain one thing. I made it very clear that you can't speak of a double communion, of simultaneous communion, yes. We cannot split the church in pro-Roman, pro-Constantinople. This all has to be done uh, at the same time. So stop, please don't talk about a double communion, but of a simultaneous communion that we would do together, the Ukrainian church or whatever, would do together with the church of Constantinople. Second, the uh, Kievan study group. The Kievan study group did really a great job. First, it went, it started from those words of Pope John Paul II, when he said that the Church of Kiev was Orthodox in faith and Catholic in love. And there were very successful meetings uh, between the representatives of the, uh, of the uh, Ecumenical Patriarchate and of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic, uh, Greek Catholic Church, Metropolitan Callistas were, Metropolitan Maxim Hermanyuk and various professors, and it stopped in 1996 and 1997. All the documents are published in Logos, uh, were published in Logos in Canada. And uh, uh, Cardinal Huzar and the president, his beatitude, Shilchuk, Svetoslav, really wanted and want to continue. The reason why, um, but, should, um, but the patriarch Svetoslav, Shilchuk, would like this to be, this time, not to be a diaspora project, but a Ukrainian project, uh, with the concert, with the patriarchate of uh, ecumenical patriarchate in Kiev, it was stopped for three reasons. First, the lack of money. This project was very expensive, and it was supported by Bishop uh, Basil Lawson. When he stopped supporting, that was impossible or practically unrealistic to continue. Second. 
we had COVID and now the war. But it was uh, this Kievan study group did, did, and uh, inside did find interest even in Rome in the Vatican. And find the two churches that mostly speak about this simultaneous union, about this dialogue in the Catholic Church are the Melkite Church and the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. It is therefore necessary to intensify these, these contacts between these two churches and which do exist, but still they are quite too small. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ivan. Uh, I have a question also to, to Professor Taras. Do you think uh, when we heard all this uh, information about uh, those initiatives, do you think it is possible to renew this work of Kievan study group, including Constantinople Patriarchate, Ukrainian Greek Catholic, of course, maybe Ukrainian Orthodox Church? Uh, just want to mention that we already, five years ago, want to, to create a roadmap of our cooperation with Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church and Orthodox Church, uh, uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church, and we're still waiting for the answer from the Orthodox Church at Metropolitan Epiphany. But what do you think about to renew this, this work of this group? I see this uh, renewal of the work as very desirable, I think. But I would suggest to change maybe the final aim of the Kievan Church Study Group. Because now talking about um, some simultaneous communion is maybe a little premature because the hierarchy of both churches uh, on official level um, says that unity of faith uh, or total unity of faith is needed in order to re-establish full communion. So um, on the level of academic exchange, it's a very good initiative as it was uh, in the case of the Kievan Church Study Group. Uh, continuing this way would be good, but I would change the final aim of it. Does any have, anyone have uh, any questions, please? I am Thomas Nimit from the Vienna University. I have a question mainly to uh, Dr. Kuriletz, but maybe also to others. I understand that the double communion on this region level is a maybe maximalistic uh, demand, but uh, I'm asking myself, uh, couldn't there be smaller steps where the churches really want uh, to get a step forward uh, and uh, maybe to uh, give uh, an impetus to the higher level of dialogue, uh, as, as for instance in the filioque issue, uh, I, I see no movement in the last decades, but I think if on the uh, level of the churches uh, there would be an agreement that uh, we can uh, make a step uh, towards each other, then this could be maybe also an inspiration uh, so I don't think we just have to wait uh, if the higher level does something, but also the Eastern Catholic churches uh, could maybe also think about uh, some possibilities which uh, already exist. Thank you. <coughs> um, for me personally, there is a question. Um, what can uh, Eastern Catholic churches on their level, uh, on their local dialogues, um, achieve something different from the general uh, official theological dialogue. Because to me, all the questions they are touching in their local dialogues is the same questions which are t t touched by uh, uh, official joint uh, theological commission. And what are the small steps they can do? Uh, for me, that's the question. Yes. Is it a question back to me? Yeah, I mean, uh, why do Eastern Catholic Byzantine churches use the filioque? In our Ukrainian Catholic churches, almost always 
used in the liturgy, uh, liturgy. I don't understand why as an Eastern Catholic theologian. Tradition. If I can interrupt, it's not very right position because in Kievan uh, region and in some uh, several places in, in Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, we're not using Philoco anymore. Even in the, the Ethiopian Catholic Church. Also. In, uh, in the services of uh, in, Ukrainian Greek, uh, in Ukrainian Catholic University, we don't uh, there is use. There no of the areas, please. But usually it is just a part of tradition, nothing else, no very... Uh, yeah, please. Thank you for your paper. Um, Justin Coyle, uh, uh, Mount Angel Seminary. Um, it strikes me that in the allowance made between the Chaldean Church and the uh, Assyrian Church of the East uh, for, uh, let's say, irregular um, intercommunion in the diaspora, the argument there in that text is because of violence, right, in the homeland, uh, that these allowances are made uh, for in the diaspora, right? If you can't get to a Chaldean church, it's okay to commune in a Syrian church and so on. Um, it also strikes me that there is a large degree of Ukrainian refugees in my parish, for instance, the United States, um, some of whom drive uh, right past the Ukrainian Orthodox Church uh, to, get to, <laughs> to get to our parish. Uh, so I wonder, are there any conversations happening in the diaspora um, that could utilize that sort of precedent set by the you know, Chaldean and Assyrian churches uh, um, in time of war? Uh, sincerely, I do not know about this uh, allowance for uh, Assyrian and Chaldean church. Um, No, no, okay. I'm just thinking. What did I do? It was passion, so please. Uh, it is allowed now uh, the Eucharistic uh, hospitality, which is quite different from uh, Eucharistic communion. Uh, in the time of uh, difficulties, the, the uh, Eucharistic hospitality is allowed for the guests for the whole Catholic churches, regarding to their Orthodox brethren. Any questions, small, please? and maybe the last one, yours, and then we'll give floor. Thank you so much. My name is Pavlo Verkholiak, and I'm coming from Germany, from uh, Iceland. Maybe louder uh, or closer. Uh, I have a question about, you have already mentioned that the problem is that they have to make connection, make, make a conversation between uh, Rome and uh, people who are represent Cas uh, Orthodox Church in Ukraine, because Ukrainian Greek, Greek, Greekish Catholic Church do not have opportunity to do that themselves. I just mean that they, they have to start from this, this conversation from the Rome and from the uh, from the side of Orthodox Church. So my question is: There are some, maybe there are already some people who represent Rome Catholic, uh, Rome Catholic Church in Ukraine and make this conversation, make this dialogue between Rome Catholic Church and uh, Orthodox Ch uh, Church in Ukraine. I guess I may pass this answer to for, for Father Ihor because he is um, he is closer to the. Uh, official I'm chairman election. here, I have no speeches, but uh, you know in Ukraine you have this all Ukrainian churches council and there is also the Roman Catholic representatives and uh, they are together discussing some questions. But in Ukraine we have no dialogue at all between any churches. Uh, so uh, it's mostly questions to here in Vatican you can put these questions to, to different people that are representatives of the Roman Catholic Church in dialogue. We have several here in, 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 in this hall. But maybe this is later on the coffee breaks. And maybe you have a question. Okay. Well, 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 no, no. Yes? Um, the question of uh, so-called recognition of the Ukraine, uh, Orthodox Church of Ukraine from the part of, uh, uh, let us say, Roman Apostolic See, it's a big, large question, which I would not, uh, would, wouldn't like no, to touch. We are not going now. so deep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Um, I'm interested if you could just reflect, you mentioned the, um, the Zogby initiative and how the agreement was to recognize the office of the, of, of the, of the Pope of Rome as it was recognized within the first millennium. So I think everyone agrees that 
it, 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 or it's boilerplate that the office of the papacy has developed, and therefore Orthodox are in the position of saying, well, we don't, we don't feel obligated to recognize developments that go beyond a period. But, but on the other side, how often, or what is your perspective on uh, considering the way the patriarchy developed, and whether, to what extent, needs to recognize the limits of patriarchal authority as those obtained in the case of New Rome. And what does it mean then to speak about, say, the, the, the role of the Patriarchate of Moscow, which doesn't exist in the first millennium, to what extent are Orthodox obliged to acknowledge the development, not of, perhaps of doctrine even, of a sense of the doctrine attaching to the jurisdiction of their respective patriarchates, which may well go beyond what was in fact uh, there within the period of uh, the first millennium. I underlined in my uh, paper that uh, both communities uh, undertaking some uh, development. Uh, even Orthodox side, as you rightly mentioned it. Uh, so this is uh, both side process. <laughs> and um, from the Orthodox uh, side, we would expect that they would uh, answer this question with the authority of uh, Pan-Orthodox Council. Which happened maybe the, in in Creta in, in 2016, but the, this question was not touched because it's too nervous, too um, important for uh, uh, causing so many uh, problems. That's why this question was not touched upon uh, during this concert, and we expect that uh, this new um, development in, inside the Orthodoxy will be touched by maybe next session of the Pan-Orthodox Council. Uh, and there is one more problem which was um, uh, raised during the uh, work of uh, official theological dialogue, the question of universal primacy. When there was split inside the Orthodox uh, com Commission, Orthodox part, between those who uh, are pro, that idea that um, uh, even on the, on the local, on the, um, uh, that the, on the universal level, there is the necessity of uh, uh, primacy as well as uh, synodality. And there is part of Orthodox churches, and those who are um, attached to more to the uh, Moscow Patriarchate, which are c against this idea. And there is one big split concerning this question uh, inside the Orthodox ch uh, church communities uh, community. Thank you, but we will not go inside of this, all these questions inside of the Orthodoxy. Uh, maybe if you will have questions, we will do it later. Uh, at the end, after the uh, third 